Hello, Hello friends, welcome, welcome to Storytime story time with Mary and Molly. Today's story is called The Debtor Goes By. It's a bit of a sad story, but the end, happy and hopeful. And it was requested by one of our wonderful viewers. Thank you so much for sending this request. We hope you enjoy this story as we bring it to life. Friends, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that now and click that bell so you can receive immediate notification every time we post a new video. And now presenting, The Debtor Goes By. Tom and Tony were bored with life. It has been raining and raining and raining nonstop. And they had all played with all their toys until they had lost interest in every one of them. Tony, the smaller of the two, was at the window mournfully repeating the old refrain. Rain, rain, go to Spain. But the rain was very obstinate this afternoon. It just wouldn't go away. Suddenly, however, Tony raised a shout of eager interest. Something was happening down the street. Tom, come here and have a look. Oh, there's a debtor going by. A what going by? Asked Tom. A debtor. See, look at the lovely flowers and the nice shiny cars. What a long procession, exclaimed Tom running to the window. My, what a lot of cars. That must be Mr. John's fu Jones funeral. I expect he must be pretty hot by now. Hot? Whatever should he be hot? Cause he was a bad man and Satan must have popped him into the fire right away. How did you know he was a bad man? asked Tom, surprised at his little brother's certainty as to poor Mr. Jones' fate. Oh, I heard him swear one day when he was in our house, and he used to smoke, and I heard Mama say he went home drunk one night, so I expect he'll be poked down and down when it's where it's there very hot and he'll smell like roast. Tony! cried a voice from the other side of the room. What is that you're saying? <gasps> Hello, Hello auntie! said both boys together turning around. We, we didn't, didn't know, know you had, had come. come. I think I just came in time, said auntie. You did! said Tony eagerly. Come and see the debtor going by. He's almost gone now, but you can still see the cars. Tony, said Auntie. You shouldn't speak like that about a funeral. Poor Mrs. Jones and all the family are very, very sad about it. And you should be sorry for them and not make fun about it. We weren't making fun, said Tom angrily. We were only looking, and Tony was saying where he thought Mr. Jones had gone. But Tony was quite wrong, said Auntie, and you should both have known better. But that's what my teacher told me happens to bad people, said Tony with a grieved air. Then he was wrong, but it was a lady. Then she was wrong. And if you will come over here by the fire, I will tell you all about it. Glad for any sort of change, the two little boys rushed over to grab the most comfortable seats beside the fire. Now go on, Auntie, said Tom, now as interested as Tony. Well, said Auntie, I'm going to tell you just what is found in the Bible. For that is God's book, where he tells us how man came into this world and what happens to him when he goes out of it. First of all, how did man come into the world? 
I'm going to read a text in the second chapter of Genesis, verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, Tony, how many things go to make up a man? Two. Good boy. That's right. First, the dust of the ground. And second, the breath of life. The two together make a living soul. Separate them and death comes. Do you see? I suppose that makes it better, said Tony. Yes, said Auntie with a smile, a debtor. We read of this separation at death in Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7, where it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit, which is another word for breath, shall return unto God who gave it. So you see that when the body and the breath are separated, there is no more a living soul. This was rather deep for Tony. Do you mean there is nothing left to be poked down into a fire by Satan? He said after a pause. That's exactly right, said Auntie. There just isn't anything left. Now if I turn over the page here in uh, chapter 9, verse 5, that the dead know not anything. And again in verse 10, there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. It couldn't be plain, or could it? No, said Tom. It's very plain. But don't good people then go to heaven when they die? How can they? said Auntie. The same thing happens to them as the bad people. The two parts, the dust and the breath, separate. And there is no more living soul. The people are simply dead. But Auntie, asked Tony reluctant to let go of his idea, won't the bad people ever be poked down into a big hot fire? And won't the good people ever go to heaven? asked Tom. Oh yes. While it is perfectly true that the dead know nothing and are as fast asleep as tired little boys after a hard day's play, yet one day they will all wake up and come to life again. Jesus has told us that. He said, The hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That is found in the fifth chapter of John verses 28 and 29. But there are other texts that say the same thing. There is no doubt. Whatever the dead will be raised to life, and then the good people will, will be rewarded and the bad people punished. But auntie, asked Tom, when will it happen? Thousands of years in the future? I don't think so, dearie. You see, Tom, there is a definite fixed time by God for the dead to be raised. In Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter and 16th verse, we are told that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and the dead in Christ shall rise. For this, it is clear that all the good people who have gone to sleep in death, believing in Jesus, will be awakened by his glorious voice calling to them when he comes again. And many today believe that it will not be very long before that happens. But auntie, said Tony with a worried look on his face, what about the fire for the wicked people? Isn't there anything about that? Oh yes, Tony. That is just as clear too. And though there is only time to read you one text, here it is in the 20th chapter of Revelation and the 9th verse. Here you have the story of what happens to all the wicked people who are brought back to life to hear their final sentence from God. It says, 
fire came down from heaven fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Oh! exclaimed Tony as though fully satisfied at last. I knew they'd get it sometime. And the fire will burn up everybody and everything bad? asked Tom. Yes, dear. Everything bad will be burned up and God will make a glorious new home for all the people who love him. And in that happy, happy land, there will be no more sickness or pain and nobody will ever die anymore. And we shall never see a debtor going by again, said Tony. No, dear, said Auntie with a deep feeling. Thank God, never Never again. Thank you, Fred, so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this beautiful, deep story. It was definitely a, a deep story. That's right. And how Tony was calling bad people and good people. All of us, without Jesus Christ, are bad people. But with when we ex accept Christ into our lives and become born again, and washed in His blood, Amen. His righteousness makes us good people. Because with, on our own, we, our righteousness is filthy rags. Filthy rags. So without, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you will not be in heaven. Right. But today is the perfect time to come to know Jesus as exactly. your personal savior. And if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, just send us a message and we can pray for you and uh, lead you to the Lord uh, through the steps of how to come to know Jesus as your personal savior. Thank you friends for watching and we see you next time. Bye. Bye.